Stop, Joseph. Let's watch this first. That's all. That's all. That's by the passage of unimaginable time. These fossils are almost all that's left behind of the most magnificent creatures ever to roam this planet. Not much, you might think. But there you'd be wrong. And who am I to be telling you all this? I'm a paleontologist. I've spent my life scratching in the ground for what these creatures have left behind, analyzing clues frozen in time. From these fossils, there's just enough evidence for us to imagine what life was like then. It was a world ruled by giant reptiles where mountainous herbivores fought for survival against nightmarish predators. So allow me to take you on an extraordinary journey, and you won't even have to leave your seats. Together, we will travel back hundreds of millions of years to a time when the world was young and the predators were huge. Of animal. 
the dinosaur. A group of reptiles destined to dominate the globe. He's a creature born into a vicious world where surviving is as much about luck as skill. There's two of them now. And of course, with all these babies around, for the carnivore, it's forever feeding time. Whoa. Lillian Sturgis, one of the first of the predators. See the man under it? See, they're walking. She's defending her nest and cannot go back to the search for food. 
With vegetation scarce, Platinosaurus is a survival machine. Her long neck allows her to graze on the ground and from above. Did you know that the ground beneath our feet is always on the move? But here in the Triassic, but also in the more familiar 21st century. Well, you'd think you'd be falling over all the time, wouldn't you? But it doesn't work like that. You see, the continents move slowly, at about the same speed our fingernails grow. Hold tight now. It's time to put our foot on the accelerator pedal. 50 million years in an instant. What new world will we find? The single continent of Pangaea begins to break apart.
Let's take our first steps in this lush new terrain. What kind of creatures do you think we'll find here? Look at this, a footprint. Oh, I love these because, believe it or not, something as delicate as a footprint can be fossilized in rock for millions of years. And why is a footprint so important to a paleontologist like me? Well, most fossils I find are from dead things. Teeth and bones left behind by corpses. These don't really answer questions like, how do dinosaurs live or who did they live with? But footprints are an example of trace fossils. These are treasures left behind by living animals, fleeting moments of a creature's life captured in stone. Trace fossils can be teeth marks on bones, burrows, or even dung dropped on the ground. But perhaps it's the footprint that is most telling of all. Footprints from around the globe have told us so much about dinosaurs. Single tracks can reveal stride length, speed, size, and stance of the beast, while groups of tracks can suggest herd structures or movements of migration. Come on, let's be trackers. Let's do this together. Let's see what we can find. Now, this is a predator print. You can tell by the claw. And another. Uh -oh. T-Rex, where's the T-Rex? Incredible! Now we're actually walking with dinosaurs! No, oh, no. It's oh, coming. And these over here, another one. these are herbivore prints, walking side by side. But then look here, something happened. The stride length changes. And these marks here, what do oh, they say? No. Attack! <laughs> struck its prey. And you know, some people think science is boring. Well, it's not. It's full of exciting mysteries and discoveries. And nowhere are they more surprising than here in the Jurassic period.
whose only hope is to hold his ground. There's no way he could ever outrun the Allosaurus. Long neck. 